Shabbat Shalom. This is Chad with Return of the Remnant Ministry. And I thought today I wanted to do a short but very important teaching on baptism. Is baptism important? And what did Peter say in 1 Peter 3.21 where he says, baptism now saves you? Now, before I start, I want to give a disclaimer that no matter no matter your what you believe, your repentance and baptism, any one of those things, only through the shed blood of Messiah Yeshua can anyone be saved, period, period. So there's going to be people that are going to are going to ask or going to, they're going to comment and they're going to say, well, what about the man in the foxhole who believed in Jesus, Yeshua, <clears throat> but was not able to get baptized and was killed? Will he have eternal life? Uh, what about, um, you know, anyone who who doesn't have a chance to be baptized, but yet they do believe with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength that Yeshua is the Messiah and that he came and died for their sins. You know, that is not for me to decide. That is, you know, I, I believe they do have eternal life, but that's just my opinion. But what I want to share today is just the importance of the, the, the plan of salvation and how baptism plays a role in that. So with that, let's go ahead and get, get started. So Again, what is the biblical plan of salvation? Is water baptism important in that plan? And before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the scriptures and about how the Bible gives us several examples of how water can bring forth or preserve life and how it can also bring forth death. And, you know, if you go into the Tanakh, uh, the Old Testament, you can see that the washing of the priests through the laver in the temple was a prerequisite prior to presenting offerings before the Lord, before yod heh lest they die. So that was a sanctification, if you will, of the priests. Um, we know in the Bible that in Hebrew, the mikvah, the water mikvah was a way of changing one status from unclean to clean. There's areas in the Torah that says if you have uncleanness, that you are to bathe in water and be unclean until evening. So there's a purification aspect to that. <clears throat> there was also a, a mikvah of, of water with the ashes of the red heifer that also cleansed you from touching a dead person. So if you will, kind of a transition of being in a state of death because you're touching death <clears throat> to that of life. <clears throat> and there is also several other examples that we can find too in the Bible, such as what happens with the leper, a Nazarite, you know, again, the sanctification of priests. It's also a status change, you know, after, after being immersed in water. And then we also know we have a, a story in the in the Bible of Noah's flood and God used water in Noah's time as a way of cleansing the earth of sin and wickedness, which would be a, definitely be a form of judgment. So we can see several places in the Bible, the importance of water, whether it preserves life or whether it can be a judgment. So what is the biblical plan of salvation. And this is just what I see. It may be slightly different for you, uh, but in my research, <clears throat> there's three components in the plan of salvation. First, you have to believe. Second, you have to repent of your sins. And third, you need to be baptized. And we're going to lay that out today. If we take a look at the believing in John chapter 1, verse 12, I don't have it up, uh, but it basically what it says, <clears throat> John says, But as many as received him, received Yeshua, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we need to believe on the name of Yeshua, 
the Messiah. And then we have that very famous verse of John 3, 16 and 3, 17 that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through Yeshua, might be saved. So we have a couple verses on believing in Yeshua. Then at the end of John chapter 20, one of the last verses John writes here, actually the last verse, <clears throat> John 20 verse 31, John says, but these are written, all these things are written in these gospels that you might believe that Yeshua is the Mashiach, the anointed one, the Christ, Ben Elohim, son of God. And that believing you might have life through his name. So let's mark that down. On the plan of salvation, step one is believing in Yeshua. Step two is repentance. And several times we see it in scripture. I'm going to give you one area for the sake of time because I don't want this to go too long. <laughs> I like to try and keep this. 20 to 30 minutes <clears throat> in Luke 13, Luke 13. Uh, 13. Let's get back here. I'm going to start in verse one, but verse three is what we want. There were present at that season. Some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices and Yeshua answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And that word, repent, basically comes from the Hebrew word teshuva, meaning to turn back. To turn away from your sin back to God's word and follow God's word. OK, <clears throat> so we have step two of repentance. So first you have to believe in Yeshua, believe in him, believe that he died for your sins. And the second is you need to repent of those sins that he died for. And lastly, we have water baptism. And, <clears throat> you know, as a baby, when I was younger in the Lutheran church, I was baptized as a baby with the sprinkling of water and apparently I was baptized, but that is not the plan of, of uh, salvation. It is not the plan of salvation. Number one, I was a baby. I didn't know right from wrong. I didn't know what to believe. I didn't know anything about Jesus. Number two, I didn't repent. What was I to repent from? And number three, I was sprinkled with the water and not immersed. And you will see the importance of that. And I know I'm going to rough, probably rustle some, some feathers with people maybe in the Catholic Church, uh, in the Lutheran Church, in the Presbyterian, maybe other areas as well. But you're going to see here that how important it is. It was so important that I know that I was baptized again in Jerusalem several years ago my first time going to israel but i want to make sure that i was baptized for the right reason that i was baptized for the remission of sins in yeshua's name and that is very very important so we have believing repentance and then we have water baptism and in mark 16 mark 16 verse 16 i'm going to go with 15 for a little context this is the last one of the last commandments that Yeshua gives his disciples and to us as believers in Yeshua. And he said unto them, unto his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes, believes in Yeshua, okay, and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. So we see here. The three steps involved of believing in Yeshua, repenting of one's sins, turning away from them, 
and confirming that through water baptism. And you're going to see several places in the Bible, you're going to see a pattern. And when I went through this and looked at it, I was utterly amazed. <clears throat> if we go into Acts, Acts chapter 2, when Peter, this is again at Pentecost, more properly called Shavuot, Peter and some of the disciples, they're in the temple, along with a lot of other people. And Peter gives basically one of his first sermons. And scrolling down, starting in Acts 2, verse 36, Peter says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Yeshua, whom you have crucified, both master and Messiah. Now, when they heard, these Jews and people that were there, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? So they, first off, they already believed. Okay. They believed first. They believed in what Peter said. And then Peter said in verse 38, Repent to make teshuva and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and, uh, but we can continue, we can continue, and I can show you several places, several in the, in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, Renewed Covenant, where, where we see this. So that's the first part. Uh, so is that a fluke, or is there more places? Well, let's go to Acts, Acts chapter 8. This is after Stephen died, after he was stoned by the Sanhedrin. If we go into Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Messiah unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was a great joy in that city. And later there's a, there's a guy there who has also practiced sorcery. He wanted to be... But anyway, we're, we're just going to skip to the part of the people of the city. Acts verse 8, verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name Messiah Yeshua, those that believe on his name, they were baptized, both men and women. And I'm going to get ahead of myself here, but I want to make a point here. The baptism that they received was not a sprinkling of water on the forehead or as a baby, but as an adult who can make a decision, who believed, those that believed in Yeshua, they were baptized. They were fully immersed. The Greek word here is baptizo, which means to dip, to fully immerse, um, I mean, it is a it is an entirely wet baptism of, of going under. And you'll see why later how I can relate this uh, also with the death, burial and resurrection of Yeshua. We'll see this in a little bit. So here here we see another pattern of believing, repenting and and being baptized. Uh, and then a little bit later in this chapter, after Philip's done there, we know for many of you who read the Bible often, we know about Philip and the eunuch. And remember in Acts chapter 8 later, there was a, a eunuch who came for the feast days in Jerusalem. So obviously this eunuch is now leaving Jerusalem after Shavuot, going back to where he came from. And he was reading... Basically, Isaiah 53, the, the chapter on the suffering servant, which is all about Yeshua, not, not the, the people of Israel, but Yeshua, the Messiah, the suffering servant. And so the eunuch is trying to understand the scripture. And 
he sees Philip. Acts 8, 34, the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaks the prophet this. What is Isaiah prophesying about? Is he prophesying of himself or of some other man? Again, people understood even back then that this is about a person, not a people group. Starting at Acts 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Yeshua. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What does, what hinders me to be baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Believe in what? Believe in Yeshua. Believe in the Messiah, that he died for your sins. And he answered and he said, I believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, the Son of God. And so then he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Isn't that awesome? Incredible. But there's more. If we go to Acts chapter 9, Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus. I'm not going to read all that, but you can read it and you can see that in this story, Paul has a personal encounter with Messiah Yeshua. You know, he's on his way to Damascus to rest more believers. <clears throat> and we know that Yeshua stops him and he says, you know, why are you, why are you persecuting me? Why are you coming against me? And so Paul has this personal encounter with Yeshua and more than likely it says he never ate or drank for three days and more than likely he was fasting. He was probably fasting three days without food and water. And then it says he prayed in verse 11 and you know, it was basically a huge prayer of repentance and teshuva, if you will. And then lastly, in verse 18, I'll scroll down to it. After he entered the house, of a believer, it says in verse 18 of Acts 9, and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and he arose and was baptized. Again, baptizo, meaning fully immersed. They understood it back then as a mikvah, but this was not an ordinary mikvah. This is not a mikvah of clean and unclean. This is a mikvah of repentance. If we look later, Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, reading the story, not going into all the details for the sake of time, you can read it, you can see that Cornelius believed that Yeshua was the Messiah. If we scroll down to Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed Yeshua of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with power, and who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And so from the scriptures, we know that Cornelius feared God. He was a righteous man, meaning he was keeping the commandments of Yah. He had already repented. All that was left was for him to be baptized. And remember that Yeshua kind of gave a instruction for the disciples to, to go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And here he is coming to a Gentile's house, a, a, a believer that was a Gentile. And, but once they, once, once Peter and some of the Jews that were with him heard them speak in tongues and magnifying God, We'll go to Acts chapter 10, verse 46. I'm going to go back a couple. Verse 44, when, while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. For they, that means... Peter and those that were with him heard them, that's Cornelius and those with Cornelius, speak with tongues and magnify God. 
Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water? What's he talking about? He's talking about baptism. That these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Yeshua, of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So we see this again in the book of Acts, where there's believing in Yeshua, that he is the Messiah. As, as Yeshua said in Acts 17, 3, this is eternal life, that they believe you, Father in heaven, are the only true Elohim and Messiah Yeshua whom you sent. Later, in Acts chapter 16, there was a woman by the name of Lydia who believed and she was baptized. Later, in Acts 16, the jailer who had imprisoned uh, Paul, we'll go to that. Hmm. Scrolling down here. So at midnight, Paul and Silas are now in prison. They prayed and sang praises unto God. This is Acts 16, 25. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awoke out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword that he would kill himself. Because that's what happened in those days. If you allowed anyone to escape, your life would be required. And he supposed that the prisoners had fled. But then Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Don't harm yourself, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, what? Believe on the Lord, Messiah Yeshua, and you shall be saved in your house. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night. He didn't wait until, you know, later on, a year later, five years later, 10. No, right then and there, he took them. He took him and all that were in the house they walk okay i'm sorry Acts 1633 he took them that same hour of the night he washed their stripes so so those that were beaten paul and silas and then he was baptized he and all his straight away so anyway we see again the jailer believed and he was baptized later in acts chapter 18 you have um in in corinth the corinthians crispus who was part of the synagogue there and others believe and were baptized. So again, as I said earlier, what does it mean to be baptized? And I'm sorry to say that baptism that you may have received as a baby being sprinkled with holy water in a church. Uh, in my opinion, what I see in the scriptures is not a baptism. Again, in the Greek, baptizo, that we read here in the New Testament, means to immerse or to submerge, not a sprinkling of water. And again, as I said before, this begs the question, do, does infant baptism, baptism count? And what about the baptism through sprinkling of water? And as I said earlier, it is a complete submersion, and I don't believe, as a baby, you are baptized. And I know I'm saying this strong, and again, this is my opinion. And again, I'm not the I'm not the author and finisher of of our faith and the salvation. I'm, it's not me; it's Yeshua. So, look into this. If you were baptized as a baby, you may want to really look into this, pray about it, and and get baptized. I also will say this as well. If you have come into the Hebrew roots messianic movement, so to speak, and, you know, maybe you've gone down and you've done mikvahs and immersed yourself, those are all great. But make sure the next time you go, as soon as possible, actually, do yourself a favor, do a mikvah again, but then make sure this mikvah is for the washing away of your sins in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. 
the one who died for you and go under okay so why is it important that we immerse ourselves well if we go to romans 6 paul gives us an idea here romans 6 starting in verse 3 Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Messiah Yeshua were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So what... Paul is equating to here is you go into the water, you go under as a shadow of death, burial, and you come out of the water, resurrected, a new man, a new creature, putting on Messiah. You were the old man here before you went under. And as the waters cover you, just like Noah's flood, but as the waters cover you, you go into death, burial, and then you come out of the water, arising out as a resurrection, a new creature. Okay? <clears throat> this is another reason why when you when you read later in Romans 10, when Paul is saying here, because I used to always see this right here, this verse always is taken out of context. Romans 10, 9. Paul basically said, hey, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Yeshua, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And this is where a lot of times we get the sinner's prayer. That's all you need to do is believe in that. You're good to go. Okay. But remember, in Romans, this is about people who are believers. I just read to you in verse six, know you not that so many of us speaking, he's speaking to all the people that have been baptized, that already believe, that I've already gone through the plan of salvation. He's saying it to them and he's saying it. Hey, don't lose hope. You should know that if you've already been baptized, you believe you've repented, you've been baptized, you will be saved. That is what he's saying here in Romans 10 verse 9. Something to consider. Let's go a little bit farther and I'm about done. Um, so thank you for bearing with me. I just find it fascinating. Uh, it was something that really opened my eyes recently. <clears throat> if we go into Galatians 3, another uh, writing by Paul. If you go into Galatians 3, 27, it says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Messiah have put on Messiah. So again, as we go under, we die to self. We are buried in Yesh with Yeshua in his likeness, if you will, so to speak. And then we arise out of the water, resurrecting as a new creature, a new, a whole new man or new woman in Messiah. Death to old self, new life to new self. Okay. Um, and again, two other places just for us to believe that in uh, another another place that also goes with Galatians is uh, Colossians. When he's speaking to the uh, Kehilah of Colossae, <clears throat> Colossians 2, Colossians 2 verse 12, Paul says that you are buried with him in baptism, just like I said, as you go under. Okay, wherein also you are risen through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him, Yeshua, from the dead. And you being dead in your sins, so as you go under complete submersion, your sins are washed away, you are dead to the old self, you come out a new creature, new, new man or new woman. Okay, and as I began this teaching that Baptism now saves you. Peter Peter tells us that in 1 Peter 3. And I'm now 
you're going to get a better idea, a better feel for what he meant when he said that. Because so many people gloss over this baptism, and it is a big, big deal. In my opinion, it is. In my opinion, it is. Now, if there are some people, as I said before, I made that disclaimer, there may be some people at the last minute, a life or death situation where, you know what, maybe that man in the foxhole who didn't believe or never heard the gospel message heard it. And believe in all his heart that Yeshua was the Messiah and that he died, that he died for that person's sins. I do believe that person has eternal life. You know, it's it's up to our king. Our king makes that call. He makes that decision. Um, that person never had an opportunity to be baptized. But I would strongly suggest if you have the opportunity, you're still around and you have the opportunity to be baptized. I would go find a place and be baptized. Follow this pattern. I think it's very, very important. So let's go to 1 Peter 3. We'll finish this out. 1 Peter 3, and I said 1 Peter 3, 21 is that now baptism saves you, but I'm going to go back just a little bit for context. Starting in 18, for Messiah also has suffered, has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, where few, only eight, eight souls were saved by water. The light figure one to even baptism also now saves us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah, who has gone into heaven, is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So if you think about this, when you read the part in 1 Peter 3.21, when he says, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, he's speaking about, you know, one of an ordinary mikvah where you're in the state of uncleanness and you go and immerse yourself to be clean. OK, whether you you had uh, a discharge or um, uh, around a dead body any anything, anything like that <clears throat> where you're in a state of uncleanness and now you are to, doing a mikvah to be basically ceremonially clean from an unclean state to a clean state. And he's saying here that this baptism is not that. He's talking about being baptized for salvation, for the forgiveness of your sins. So it's something more than just the washing away of the uncleanness and being clean, but yet being baptized in Yeshua. It's a mikvah of salvation in Yeshua. And for those of us who have done this, just remember this, after we've been baptized, the way we see it in the Bible, the writer of Hebrews has something to say about that. And I'll end with this. In Hebrews 10, starting verse 21, and having a high priest over the house of God, so Yeshua is that high priest of the order of Melchizedek, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Wavering. So, again, this is, again, baptism. It, it, is, it is something that is really eye-opening to me anyway when I went through this and looked at it. Um, but again, I, we had somebody say long ago, my wife and I heard him, he's like, get it done, get it done, get your baptism, get it done. And I think he, this guy was, it was right. I mean, we need to do what it says in the Bible, follow the plan of salvation, believe that Yeshua died for your sins, repent of those sins and get baptized for the remission of those sins. And as you get yourself baptized, you leave your old self, 
you die to self, you're buried in Messiah, you arise and you resurrect and become a new creature in Messiah. You put on Messiah, as it says in Romans 6. I hope this teaching was okay. I uh, hope you got something out of it. I know when I did a teach the teaching on this and studied it, definitely got some good information on it. And um, again, if you haven't been baptized, fully immersed for the remission of your sins in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, get it done. <laughs> get it done. I hope this was a blessing to you. Until we meet again, shalom.